definition of the word Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Further on, you find that one of the religious editors for the Toronto Star by, by the name of Tom Harper, in describing this particular verse, go baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, he says, all but the most conservative of scholars agree that at least the latter part of this command was inserted later. Because baptism in the early days in the early church was done in the name of Jesus, not in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And he says, the formula itself occurs nowhere else in the New Testament, and we know from only available evidence that the earliest church did not baptize people using these words. Baptism was into or in the name of Jesus alone. So it's argued that the verse originally read baptizing them in my name and was subsequently expanded to work in the dogma, in a manner of speaking, by an outside editor. He continues by saying, and he ends on this point, in fact, the first view put forward by critical scholars, as well as the Unitarians in the 19th century, was stated in Peake's commentary of the Bible in 1919, where he states, the church of the first days did not observe this worldwide commandment, even if they knew it. The command to baptize into the threefold name is a late doctrinal extension. I just would like to know, when you say Father, the, uh, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, are these three distinct from one another, or are they a unit is three? Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just going to ask the Christians to help me because this is really defining what we believe about our God. First of all, Jesus said, God is one. Yet, as we study the New Testament, we see that Jesus received worship. Matthew 28. Now remember, his first disciples were strict Jewish monotheists. They knew the law. They knew Exodus 20. God had said, you shall have no other God for me. Yet they recognized in Jesus the presence and the activity of God. After Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured, poured out upon the church, the church started to work and obey and serve Christ. They recognized that this was the presence of God as well with them. As you study the New Testament, not later teachings of, say, the Council of Nicaea, Charles Sedan, and all these councils. No. Even the New Testament gives abundant witness within its documents to the fact that we believe in one God, revealed as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, separate, yet also united. We maintain both truths. They work together in closest association, yet they are separate as well. Just on that point of the day of Pentecost, yes. I must say that according to the witnesses that was present, that when the people claimed that they received the Spirit, that the witnesses said, this is no Spirit and no different languages that you are talking, but you are in fact drunk. That was the verdict of the witnesses, yes. which uh, disputes what you have said. Okay. First of all, they said, these men are drunk. And then remember after that in Acts 2, Peter got up and preached and declared Christ. So it started off with a drunk accusation and ended off with many of them coming to faith in Jesus. It started off with a drunk accusation and ended off with many of them coming to faith in Jesus. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the of my team from the Islamic Propagation Center International in Durban, words not enough. Believe me, my brothers and sisters, I cannot find the appropriate word to thank you all for the great hospitality, kindness, and friendship that you have given us. By inviting us over to your, to your church, it was an historic day in, in our lives, and we will never, ever forget that. Never, ever. And we will remember you right to the fullest. Thank you so much, and we really, really appreciate it. We also extend an invitation to you, whenever you are in Durban, please Bob got our address, he knows where to get more of us. Yeah. Please do come over, spend a day with us, we, and we want to reciprocate as well. Please, we expect, we expect you all, in the long, not, not in the long too distance, to come over and spend a day with us. Bob, thank you so much, we really appreciate all that you have done for us. Thank you so much. I will only go to Durban if they guarantee good samosas. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say three things in closing. First of all,
of all, I want to ask the local Muslim community to take hold of what happened today and run with the idea. Don't wait for the IPCI to come to board this. That is the first thing. The second thing I want to say is this, that I hope in all our discussion you have become aware that we Christians love Muslims. You guys are just about our food and drink. We are here <laughs> to love you. <laughs> so don't keep yourselves in, so don't keep yourself in scarce. And the third thing is because it really is, I think, a memorable day for the whole church of Port Elizabeth and I think for the Muslim community. We felt we want to celebrate that day. And we're going to ask Pastor Glenn to come forward. He's going to give each one of the Muslim community a gift from our church. We trust that you will take it and that you will keep it and that you will remember five, six, seven years down the line. This was the day that we as a people came to the Sydney Baptist Church and there we received nothing but love. So Pastor Glenn, if you come forward, I'm going to ask all our Muslim friends to stand. I'm going to give some things to you. Thank you very much. I've got a copy of it. Thank you very much Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank